Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. The Lord be with you. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to recline and dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline a table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today there is a nice convergence between the first Saturday in November that we always devote to the glory of God for the gift of the Blessed Mother. And secondly, we honor today the memorial of St. Martin de Porres. I think it's safe to say that neither Mary nor Martin would even be invited to the banquet, much less a place of honor. Mary is a, a lowly virgin of no great account, no great distinguishing uh, achievements, uh, little known from an obscure place. And uh, so she probably wouldn't even be allowed to wait or serve on the table. Martin the poorest certainly would not be. Uh, most of you in this church, if not all of you, would not want his resume. He comes from <clears throat> very, very, shall we say, to use the contemporary jargon, he comes from a very wounded background. He's born out of wedlock. His father didn't want him. His mother was an ex-slave. Talk about starting behind the line in the race of life. That's about as bad or as good, depending on how you look at it, as it gets. And yet Martin the Poor's did not see why is so popular today. He did not see himself as a victim. He did not see his life as an excuse for not doing something beautiful for God and something loving for creatures great and small around him. See, Martin could have wallowed in his past and said, well, you know, I've been, help, I've been dealt a dirty hand here. And I didn't even have any opportunity to put the poker chips in. But as most poker players know, it's not the cards you dealt, it's how, the, how you played the cards you dealt. And he played them for God. And he played them for others. Martin went on and became a Dominican brother. 
And he was a person who took the most menial tasks and did them with love. You see, because at the heart of the Christian life, at the heart of the Christian life, you can do all of the other stuff you want. You can do all of it. You can run here, run there, visit this, visit that. You can do all that stuff. If your spiritual life is not grounded in charity and humility, it's a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. It's what it is. Especially the virtue of humility. Especially the virtue of humility. Now we have to be clear about what humility is not. Humility is not self-abasement. It's not the idea that I have no gifts and talents, I have no abilities. Well, God didn't put you here for no reason. God who calls every human being into existence calls them for a purpose, a plan, a gift, and a contribution that they will make. So to say, I don't have any gifts, I don't have any abilities, I have no talents, is ultimately an insult and a deny of Almighty God who is the giver of all good gifts. Did God just put you here to suck up air and occupy space? I don't think so. I don't think Almighty God did that. This very day, God woke you up. Not your alarm clock. God woke you up for something that only you can do. But more importantly, he woke you up to become more and more the person he wants you to be. Not something, but somebody. As St. Paul says in Philippians, life is Christ. Life is Christ. Life is not the 401k plan, the zip code number, what you drive, the boat that floats, and all that other sort of stuff. Because all that passes away. It passes away. In many instances, it will outlive you. Life is Christ. And humility is the willingness, is the willingness to acknowledge our ultimate dependency and need before Almighty God. The ultimate willingness to be in the service of others, and I don't care what it is, what it is. That's, that's the path into holiness. Because once you embrace humility, charity becomes a way of life. Charity becomes a way of life. You know they had a, a novice in this uh, Benedictine community, in this monastery. And he was just starting out full of zeal, you know, and drive and all of that sort of stuff that only comes with being young and foolish and all of those kinds of things. And there was a, a wonderful old monk, Father Andrew, Father Andrew. And he noticed how much the other monks revered him and spoke so highly of him and his holiness, life of prayer, all of that sort of stuff. And finally, the, uh, the young novice had the courage after morning breakfast to approach Father Andrew and he said, Father Andrew, I want very much to be a monk like you. I want to be holy. I want to be close to God. I want to be a good Benedictine. 
What is the key? What is the path? But Andrew looked at him and he said, uh, Have you had breakfast yet? He said, uh, Yes. He said, Then wash the dishes. If that escapes you, I'm really sorry. But the path to holiness is washing the dishes. Why? Because it's the next thing to do. Now, nobody's going to stand and applaud and give you a plaque or a trophy. As many of you each day who turn houses into homes, you do things that no one sees and knows except the one that really counts, Almighty God. It's those humble, ordinary, everyday things. And that's what Martin the Poise did. He was an infirmary, worked with the sick. And I think of all those people who are nurses, nurses' aides, orderlies, all of those people that, you know, they don't really amount to much, except when you need to go down to x-ray and you can't walk. Then all of a sudden, pretty important to know who the orderly is. All of those people every day who do little ordinary uncelebrated things that make our life better, more human and closer to God. He was also a great lover of animals. He tended to many of them. Unfortunately, today, we have this foolishness about animal rights, animal rights, with animal rights. I don't believe in animal rights. And I think if you think about it for a moment, neither will you. I, think, I, I believe in something much more important than animal rights. Human responsibility to be good stewards for God's creatures that are entrusted to us. Rights? <laughs> then we can get into an argument about whose rights trumps whose rights. But when you have a responsibility, you care even for that animal that may wander onto your porch, or that bird that may be limping in your backyard. That's not uh, kind of Franciscan sentimentality about uh, animals. It's about glory to God even in the smallest of creatures, because they're reflections of God's goodness. And Martin knew that. And Martin is the patron for the intercession of healing among those from different ethnic and racial backgrounds, because he himself was. And how we need that today, when we have too many of our so-called, so-called, and highly misnamed leaders who every day stoke the flames of division, racial hatred, racial disharmony for some political advantage. We see that all over the place. We deserve much better than that. But we're not getting it because we don't demand it. How much do we pray for? The divisions that are all around, gender divisions, socioeconomic divisions, religious divisions. And it's always to some group or some person's advantage to do that. Except it's not to the advantage of the common good. It's not to the advantage of generations who are coming up. Martin de Porus is really a saint who really speaks to Christians, certainly Catholics, in all places, times, and ages. Because charity and humility are always in season. 
are always needed. Are always the inner workings of the Holy Spirit. Certainly, the Blessed Mother, whom we honor as well today, the lowly handmaid of the Lord, and yet in her lowliness, in her humility, in her lack of worldly resources, in her words, the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. So it's not our, it's not our human estate. God often picks the lowly, those who have all kind of baggage, and calls them for a work on behalf of the church, others, and ultimately the kingdom of God. And so this morning, when we leave church and go about whatever we go about, it's not a bad thing to ask. What dishes is God asking me to wash today? What unity in the place of division is God asking me to help bring about? What humble service today is the Lord asking of me and me alone in the particularity of our life? These are not trivial questions. They're not academic questions. They are existential questions. How we exist as a human being and how do we exist in the presence and the glory of God? And so this morning, I doubt if Mary, and I know Martin the Force, would not have been invited to that wedding banquet that Jesus and the leading Pharisees attended. They wouldn't be invited. We wouldn't, wouldn't even get in the door. They've been invited to a far, far better banquet. It's that eternal banquet. That banquet that never ends. In which, in the presence of Almighty God, we sing his glory and praise, not only for the moment, but forever. And so this morning it's up to us. You can scramble for those seats at the earthly bank. You can do that. Or you can be welcomed at that eternal bank. The decision is entirely yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand. Let us pray for all of our religious leaders that they may be men and women outstanding in faith, that they may truly care for those entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for our civic and governmental leaders that they may be men and women outstanding in virtue, that they may work for the common good, be ever mindful of the poor, and always promote the dignity and sacredness of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for all of our relatives and friends who are sick in mind, body, and spirit, that the graces of Jesus, the divine physician, may touch them, heal them, and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all of our dearly departed, that they may indeed be received into the everlasting kingdom of peace, blessedness, and we also remember today uh, Lucy Soto and Mario Portelli, that they indeed may rest in the peace of, of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we present all of our prayers to you. You search our hearts, you know what we need. Help us each day to walk the path of charity and humility, 
for that path leads to you and that eternal banquet without end. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Amen. intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your son. No petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. And so our voices blend with all the choirs of archangels, angels, and saints as we pray. Amen. Holy, 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 Holy. Just and our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the celebration of all the saints and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo our thankful hymn of praise for truly even to earth's ends you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age when you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so our voices blend with all the choirs of archangels, angels, and saints as we pray. Holy, 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 fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim the Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and 
chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, we have done your will throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Soft to one another, sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O oh Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may by imitating her serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. We pray this in Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, you may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Spirit, be set upon you, remain forever. Amen. Amen. Our celebration of this Eucharist is ended. It is also begun. Let us go forth now to love and serve the Lord. Amen.